Let me begin by congratulating the class of 2013 for all you have accomplished and all you have learned and perhaps more importantly for all that you will accomplish and for all that you will learn. You have learned many kinds of things. You have learned a language, you have learned concepts, you have learned a professional attitude, uh, you have learned rules, and you have begun to acquire an, a magic gift, and that's the gift of expert intuition, which you will develop throughout your career. And I want to talk about expert intuition and about the confidence that comes with it, and it's a gift, and about the threats that are associated with this gift. Expert intuition is when things come to your mind immediately and quickly and without effort, when faced with a decision, only one solution comes to your mind, and it's a good one. And it comes with confidence, and you are quite sure of it. And we know a lot about how expert confidence actually develops. We know that it takes many years for in complex situations. We know that it depends on having a regular environment in which you can learn the rules of that environment so that they become intuitive and they become immediate. And, and having an opportunity to get good feedback about the quality of your decisions over time. And once you have that, this is how chess players recognize chess position. They learn to see the chess board differently from other people. And this is how you, as physicians, will develop the skill of recognizing diagnosis and of recognizing symptoms, forming patterns, and, and knowing what to do without having to consider too many options. Expert intuition is a great gift, and it's associated with a feeling of confidence. And confidence in general is associated with having only one solution come to your mind. Confidence is wonderful in many ways. It allows you to act quickly. It, uh, it prevents a great deal of wear and tear of doubt and anxiety. And confidence is also in great demand. Your patients will want you to be confident. Your colleagues will want you to be confident. And here there is a threat. And here is, there is a real danger. And the threat is that when a single idea comes to our mind, it is not necessarily correct. And there are many situations in which we are confident without justification. And It is very difficult, actually. The real difficulty of this is knowing when you are in one situation and when you are in the other. When is it the, the major fact that we do know is there is a great deal of overconfidence in human judgment in general. That is, you know, if you ask in uncertain situations, if you ask people uh, how certain are you of something and they tell you 90% sure, if they were doing this right, they should be right about 90% of the time when they say that. That's not what, what is found. Quite frequently, I mean, the standard finding is that when people are 90% sure, they're wrong about 50% of the time. <laughs> and, and that applies, unfortunately, to professionals, and it's been studied extensively with physicians, and physicians are not free of this problem of overconfidence. So quite frequently, when they have that unique solution or that uh, unique interpretation of the fact, it is going to be wrong. What does that do and what can be done about it? Well, here is where the rules that you have acquired become highly relevant. And here is where the companion that you will always have because you know, you are the first generation who will never be alone with a patient. There will always be a computer around there with knowledge and with possibilities of bringing you the most relevant evidence and in some cases help 
in finding solutions to problems that you cannot solve alone. The, those rules that you have to acquire, they are in multiple domains and, and they involve checklists. I recommend to you all a book that by Atul Gawande on the Checklist Manifesto, which I thought an inspiring book, because it shows the importance of rules that you adopt and you follow in small matters and sometimes in very important matters. There are rules of procedures and there are also rules of, that govern thinking when intuition is not there to guide you. You need to be aware and you will need to be aware in your practice of the circumstances under which you can trust yourself and of the circumstances under which you should be suspicious of yourself. You should distinguish between the skills that you have acquired because this is a pattern to which you have been exposed many times and you can be confident in your ability to recognize it. You should distinguish those situations from cases in which just a single solution comes to your mind, but in fact, you cannot articulate why it did. You are not capable of defending it. This is just what came. You should know that your ability to distinguish between intuition that you can trust and intuitions, because subjectively they're quite the same, that you shouldn't trust, that is going to be impaired when you're very tired and you will often be very tired. Uh, I have one medical story to tell of my own experience. A few years ago, I had a, some serious back trouble and surgery was recommended and I saw a surgeon twice. He saw me in the morning one day and, and he said, well, considering everything, it doesn't look as if you need surgery now, but still come back to me with some other piece of evidence. The next time that I saw him, I had an appointment in the morning. He wasn't there because he was very busy. He eventually could see me at 10 o'clock at night. And, and he had a quick look at my data and he said, we must schedule surgery. And I asked him, how confident are you that I really do need that surgery, that you know, something will happen to me in the next year that will prevent me from functioning without it? And he said, oh, I'm completely confident. And he looked yellow with fatigue. And I went home and I never saw him again. Uh, and, and this is one of the few times where being a psychologist and something that I had learned stood me in good stead. Because I knew that when people are very tired, they tend to go down, go to their default option. They go to what they know how to do. They stop thinking and they do what comes naturally. There is a famous study of Israeli parole judges where it turns out that before their food break, they deny parole a great deal more often than immediately after their food break. And it's not because they're hungry, it's because they're tired. And when they are tired, they go to the default option and the default option is denying, uh, is denying parole. And the default option also exists for you it will exist in many cases, and you have to watch it. So, avoiding overconfidence, and yet exploiting the gift of confidence and the gift of intuition, this is going to be one of the problems that you will face. And I can, you know, I can only paraphrase the prayer of, of serenity, where, you know, by wishing you the courage to act on your intuition when you have earned the right to trust it, the discipline to follow rules when this is the best that you can do, and the wisdom to know when you must do one and when you must do the other. Thank you and good luck.